First of all, thank you for the opportunity to talk here. And I'll talk about editing large scale objects, which uh, will have three sub points. The first is uh, why do we need large scale objects at all? The second is what tools for editing do we have? And the third is to uh, remind of the pitfalls that are inherent to editing large scale objects. So let's start with the use of large scale objects. Well, there's an interest, there's a surprising reason why they are so important. The OSM France had a lunch with Francois Hollande, the president of uh, the Republic of France. And uh, the result of this lunch about open data in general, they weren't the only guests, but uh, it was about open data, is that uh, they, they took the resume that uh, OSM permet enfin de dépasser les frontières du silo France. And this roughly translates to OpenStreetMap allows the data in France, the data from the French authorities, to get out of its prison and out of the administration's format and to get into real use. And what are they talking about? Not only uh, benches in the parks, but really large-scale objects that they want to maintain in OpenStreetMap. And a complimentary statement was from, under the condition of not uh, telling his name from uh, an official from some uh, ministry in Germany. We are happy yet that you collected the data set uh, nationwide and beyond. Now we can defeat confidentially requirements from third parties because the data is already public. Means because we have the data basically, those in the ministries who want to open the data can argument that we could rather that they could rather um, keep the data inside OpenStreetMap and create that in good state than to keep all the data private. That's an important mechanism to, to keep in mind. That's a point of view from the administration, one point of view from, where, from several possible, onto OpenStreetMap. And that in particular means administration thinks often of such um, data sets like, for example, here railway lines in France. On, that's an inherently uh, large-scale object. If you want to add a classification, for example, a numbering scheme to all the railway lines in France, it would be really a, a pain to do this by opening, opening in Jersey uh, areas of 100 by 100 meter and then going uh, in a million change sets all over France. It would be completely insane. Similar thing for power lines. I've chosen the Netherlands here, which is, by the way, interesting to see um, how much detail we already have of this. It's completely a side uh, problem. And also rivers, where you also see it. It's in the Rhineland, where I'm from. <coughs> it's also large-scale objects. and. To be honest, I think people expect us to have a complete line representing the Rhine and also other bigger rivers. So I was surprised to, uh, to see in general this year that there was actually a, a hole in the Rhine. And uh, now you see, um, if, you have a, if you have a close look, um, there are Karlsruhe in the upper right and Strasbourg in the lower left. So you have a distance of, I don't know exactly, about 30 or 40 kilometers. Again, loading this uh, step by step into Josen would be a real, would really be, uh, whoop, would really be painful, whoop, whatever happened now. So there should be a solution to do this in one step. And that's what I'm talking about. Sparse editing of data means you have a defined category of data. For example, here, it's, uh, it's a river or in OSM speak, it's uh, all the ways with waterway equals river. And you want to add some, and you want to change something. For example, you want to re-add the name DE for these parts. And also, to be gentle, also the name, F, name FR, and because it also, has also been lost on these segments. One important thing to remind, uh, that's the first important thing about editing sparse data. I have first asked the last editing mapper, the guy who has removed the names, whether this was on purpose or not. Because having edit wars on large scale objects would be even worse, because not every mapper has the uh, capabilities to, add, uh, to edit them. 
Well, it turned out it was this was uh, this uh, removing the names was unintended. It was really intended to keep the names. So I started to uh, re -edit, to re-adding this. And how can you do this? That's a question of tools. Well, I suggest the following solution. Um, take chosen, load only an extract of the data, and keep as a background image the existing mapping or whatever style. And then you really uh, have the opportunity to um, edit the data in the context where it uh, makes sense. In more detail, we, uh, I've chosen, uh, the, I've installed and chosen the plugin mirror download and an additional, an uh, addition shows uh, the right background images layer and um, choosing the background images, uh, stating the query would be as follows. We would take, put the query into the box you can reach from file uh, download from overpass and then just draw a relatively large bounding box. You see this, match, um, you see this message, uh, download area too large. The happy thing is we don't have to care about this. This is in the measurement of the, of the main server with dense data and for sparse data, we get much fewer data, so we have good chances to really edit this. And what you also need is to configure the background layer that's in the imaginary preferences menu. And I've chosen this one. The black-white has the uh, advantage that you don't get uh, visually disturbed because it's all black-white and therefore it's visually in the background. And um, then just activate and then you get this in the background. You just have finally to select this, select this again in the imaginary menu. And then then you were able to, uh, to use this background and to get in the foreground the data I've just uh, mentioned to get all the ways uh, with waterway river and in this bounding box. And you see, we were happy. The, the Rhine was on the level of waterway river, still complete. It's just the name that has gone. So we can start before we everything with uh, remembering that sparse editing has its uh, pitfalls. Do not delete nodes. Do not delete or split or merge ways because there might be member and relation. The point is we have now downloaded only the ways and nodes. We don't have downloaded the relations. And doing such edits now, doing, uh, doing such operations now, would really break the relations. We don't even know that they exist. And therefore, um, editing spa or sparse editing uh, works but only for a limited set of operations. You can add or remove tags in this setting. That's fine because that's what we want to do in that setting. And with some uh, limitations, you can or move add nodes when the background in imaginary indicates no problem. This could be a matter of, dis uh, of discussion because uh, you could argue that there are other structures that aren't rendered but are present. But on the other hand, if you are moving a node over such a structure, it's likely that it's not wrong. So um, I would say it's uh, care enough to do that. Okay, so let's uh, discuss how to overcome these other um, limitations. Well, that was the query we started with. It's the usual query to get all the ways with Waterway River. Well, to see also relation memberships, we could add these two lines. This would uh, allow us to relax the condition we have just given on uh, splitting or joining ways, because then Josen would do the right thing. Same thing with ways that are crossing uh, the river. I've given you an example, just in case uh, to make clear that it, that it actually happens. This is an administrative boundary that's not on the river, but somebody has decided, I don't know if it's wrong or right, that it is crossing the river. I don't know whether there's an interrelation between this administrative boundary and the river Sieg, but probably if you want to move that node here, you probably want to move the, just uh, the river of Sieg and you don't want to move this administrative boundary. So you should be aware that the way is present. 
So we have the next example. So I have the next example enhanced by all the things I've just told. That's what you see here. That's uh, the relation, the relation request and the way request. This will enable us to get all the data to, to get to, uh, to resolve most of these issues I've just told you of the pitfalls. And this is all the public transport data for Karlsruhe. It's again something that it's again. Something that you can't edit just in a whole, because if you download, um, ah, ah, thank you. <laughs> because if you download um, Karlsruhe in a whole, you can't manage this in JOSM. It's so well mapped that JOSM will crash on the amount of data. On the other hand, to edit a bus line or another public transport relation, you really want to see the entire relation. That is, uh, and this is usually crossing just uh, through the entire city. So you really have to get the street grid of the entire city. So I decided to, to download everything that's, uh, that's relevant to public transport with this uh, criterion, hopefully getting almost everything. Now I'm in a good position to edit um, public transport relations. I can not only add and remove text, I can also happily edit relations. And it might be in such a case, if you have to edit relations uh, with a significant spatial extent, it might be the only feasible way. Again, this hasn't uh, changed. You should only move or add nodes when the background imaginary indicates no problem. But what's possible now is, if necessary, for example, if we have to, if we have to map that the bus line is uh, is, uh, is just getting off the way here, and we have to split the way here, then it's possible because JOSM is aware of all the relations that are involved. And so JOSM will keep them in good state. So it's really now possible to edit relations without doing harm. Okay. There's a further example of, uh, of editing with JOSM and this... Um, with downloading sparse data with JOSM. It's here. It's about the boundaries of, um, of the US uh, state. I think it's Wyoming. And now I'll get to a second tool that's level zero. Level zero can be reached as follows. You put a query, for example, this one into, uh, for example, this one into overpass turbo. And then you can on export choose to get that into level zero. This will not only fire up the web page that contains level zero, but also fill level zero with the um, corresponding data. Level zero is a textual editor. And uh, what sounds boring is really a cool thing, because if you have to just change the, tech, the text name or so, you could just type here something else. You could add a tag. You could entirely remove a tag. You can use copy and paste, and you don't have to to get through all the XML special characters. And uh, you can add, remove text. It's, I would consider, rather difficult to work with geometry in general. But of course, if you want to do something like splitting a way or joining two ways in a non-standard way, it's probably, again, the best choice, because you could just copy-paste these node memberships. The most important restriction, which is, as far as I know, on purpose, is uh, that you can only have 500 objects here on the left, because it would also be a, a useful tool to do, um, to do mechanical edits, and it's something we don't want to encourage in any means. So it's a good idea to have it limited to 500 objects. And a nice extra feature, if you have the cursor, yeah, if you have the cursor on a node, then uh, the marker goes to the position on the map. So you really at least uh, partly see what you do. And uh, this morning it looks like it even works on ways if the, if the nodes are present. So you have a good chance that you really do what you uh, see what you do. The only case where it doesn't work is if you load a way or relation without loading its nodes. Then, of course, uh, Level zero don't, doesn't know where the relation lives. 
It's a problem of all the, the problem that all those um, tools have. And so it can't place the marker. But in all other cases, the marker will show you where you are working. And it moves if you move the cursor. We've just moved the cursor two lines down. So I will close with reminding you of the pitfalls. The first thing is, if you want to delete nodes, remember, they might be shared among, amongst objects you see and objects you don't see. So are you sure that no other objects share nodes than those that you see? The remedy is to enhance the query by these things to get, um, to get all the data necessary to, um, or to get all the data that may be referring to these nodes. Similar thing to um, for moving nodes, do you cross nearby features? Actually, uh, the best thing I would suggest is a background map. That's not perfect, but it's acceptable because it rarely will happen that features aren't large, or that, uh, that a significant part of all features aren't rendered at all. And for relation memberships, uh, ships, do you re break relations when splitting, joining, or deleting? Then as a remedy, you can load all relations in a similar way like uh, this one here. It's just um, parentheses uh, dot underscore semicolon uh, rel uh, backwards uh, node and backwards way. And I think there's a final one. Oh, it's, it's just reminding me that uh, if I want to edit relations, it's almost inevitably that you will have to split ways. Okay, so if you all these if you so if you have all these points in mind, then I would say I wish you happy mapping, even of sparse objects, and thank you for your attention. Thanks, Roland. Um, any questions? Hi. So if I open an un incomplete uh, relation uh, in, in Shosm, I have this option to download the missing Bay objects and so on. Did you experiment with this feature or do does it not work? Uh, for this I did not experiment with the feature. Um, I'm not sure if it would well make sense in all cases. Assume you are working close to, the, to, a, national bound, uh, to a national boundary. You, would, you are likely that you are fetching a really large object. I'm not sure what happens if you download the entire German boundary, or even worse, the entire Fra French boundary, which might, uh, if you don't have uh, fetched uh, France Metropolitan, but uh, the French boundary, you will get also the overseas territories. And this, this would be really large. It takes a lot of time. <laughs> Other questions? Um, you, you showed at the beginning the way you download the data from the Overpass API. Wh which plugin is that? How? Um, it's in the Mirror Download plugin. Okay, I, I just found the, the thing to download from Zappy, but not Overpass. Is that in? Um, ah, that's it's, uh, that's a that's a case of bad documentation. You know the guy who has forgotten to document it. Okay. Um, it's actually, uh, this mirror download plugin is intended to, to make third parties in general, third party services for, for SM data in general available. And uh, for historical reason, one guy really needed the, uh, the SAPI functionality. Uh, this is uh, overly prominently. But there are two, there are two uh, menu points in the file menu you, you would find. One is download from a mirror and one is download from, uh, from overpass, and this, it's the second one I'm talking about. The first one will show exactly. Other questions? I would have another question, Roland. Um, you were explaining that large objects break easily and uh, uh, telling us how to fix them. What do you think of the idea um, to avoid large objects to break by introducing new methods 
in the data model or in the editors to, to avoid this, to prevent people from breaking the objects? Well, the point is actually you want these things. I think really um, people outside OpenStreetMap who are not uh, aware of the technical pitfalls really want OpenStreetMap to see such data sets. In a classical uh, GIS sense, you would rather have this as a separate layer and adapted to the uh, degree of detail you need. But people from outside OpenStreetMap won't know about all these GIS hassles and uh, so they really expect these large-scale objects to exist. So we have a way, to, we have to deal with them. It would be imaginable to have clever, more clever technical solutions. I think uh, the best way to go that way would be to recall Jochen's talk about the area structure, who has um, thought a lot about how to break down large-scale objects. But I don't see too much activity at the moment to get this really uh, employed into each and every OpenStreetMap tool. So this will need some years until it gets available. And for that time being, uh, I think the only solution is to, to cope with the limitations and not to say that we will start to add rivers just uh, in five years and nobody could re would really, uh, this would damage the reputation of OpenStreetMap. Thank you. Any other questions? All right, then let's thank you all again. And